let's kind of shift into um, briefly, <laughs> Marcus, on on the predator aspect because your your sidekick, you know, Doctor Will, you mm-hmm. know, he's kind of known as the predator guy, whether I think he likes it or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're <laughs> we're running a series right now on yeah. on predator management. Uh, well, I, I'm happy to to go over that briefly. Yeah, uh, it's pre- something that we definitely could spend a whole episode, <laughs> multiple yeah. episodes on, as you guys are going to. But just briefly, you know, talk yeah. about the predator's role. Well, here, here's your sound bite that's going to shock everybody. Predators oh, ate turkeys. Yeah, we we know that. That that's obvious to everybody. Lots of things like to eat turkeys, including me. I like to eat them too. Uh, the question is whether or not they are limiting, and what to do about it. And I I think most people immediately think of predator management, like I just said, as removing predators. And that is, I would say, far from the truth uh, of the of the situation. If you're in a landscape uh, where there is nowhere to nest, the predator isn't the factor that this important It's the nest, uh, you know, not having a nesting cover and what people fail to realize in that situation is that uh, habitat is a predator management tool. So all of these things that we're talking about, enhancing cover so that the hen can better conceal herself, that is reducing predation. And we have data from various places with various species suggesting the effect size of that practice on reducing predation is far more than what we can achieve through other types of predator management. So I I like to be very clear about that because most people don't think about habitat management as a, a tool to reduce predation, but it, it is the best tool at your disposal. So, um, the same, the same is true for poult rearing. And you think about, uh, if we go back into this this habitat talk for a minute, when when you're a poult that is seven days old and you can't fly, you also can't thermoregulate. And a, what one thing that I have seen quite a bit from people that is a, a big misunderstanding is they think that the main risk to that poult is predation. And that in some cases can be true, but it, when it is true, it's when you've accomplished really high quality brooding cover that don't allow the compensatory reasons to die to occur, like uh, getting too hot in the south or getting too cold in the north. That thermoregulation will kill poults, and if you don't have the opportunity for them to get in brooding cover that allows them to escape the elements that is going to kill them. And if you focus, oh, my, my poult rearing success is really poor. I'm going to take out a bunch of predators. They're still going to die because they're dying from exposure, not predation. And I don't think people put that together, but if you have that high quality brooding cover, not only do you accomplish this, this, uh, more, ad, you know, ba- basically a range of temperature thresholds that allow them to survive that, You also produce really high quality insect production. They have to eat exclusively protein at that point or nearly exclusively protein because they're growing so fast. They're growing feathers, skeletal growth. Protein comes in the form of insects. And a lot of the plants that we're promoting, forbs, broadleaf herbaceous plants, that we they're highly desirable in that case, produce not only that range of thermal environments that are needed, it also produces a ton of insects that allow them to get to flight faster, like you talked about. And that that's the key bottleneck right there. We need to get them through the elements and to flight. And if we can do that, their survival jumps substantially from there. So that's a, a bottleneck. But predation is not typically the thing that limits them through that. Uh, it, but it can be if you've accomplished habitat through those other practices and you have really high quality brooding cover available, then predation might rank higher on that, you know, the, the list of reasons to die. 
but you've also made them far less at risk to predation because they have adequate cover, particularly at that stage, to survive or, or avoid uh, aerial predators, so avian predators in particular. So if we have this high-quality understory that is really high-quality for brooding, they have essentially a canopy of forbs over, ne- over top of them. And they have a lot of bare ground underneath that to run around under and catch bugs. So they're, they're concealed from the aerial predator at that level. And I don't think that uh, people necessarily think of it that way, that when you accomplish that kind of structure and make it available to them, not only do you get them past all those other reasons to die, it also makes them far less vulnerable to predation at the same time, which is why you would see all of the, the, the habitat kind of snowballs into much higher productivity because you're addressing all of those things at once, whereas another form of predator management, you may only address one of them and you might be doing that fairly poorly at that. Yeah. Here's another, <clears throat> excuse me. Here's another sound bite for everybody. Guess what? It works for deer too. <laughs> yeah. Same <laughs> you know, we, principle. Yeah, yes. We talked to it with Dr. <laughs> Will, you know, we were on there too. It's like, you know, predator control should be like step 10 out of 10. You know, if mm-hmm. you've got good habitat, they've evolved ways to avoid predation, you know, their yeah. whole existence, you know, and like you said, the example, going back to what we're talking about with forest. Yeah. You mm-hmm. go in there and you, you remove raccoons or coyotes or whatever it is you still have no cover. You still yeah. have nowhere for them to nest or brood or anything. Yeah. Right. And and there are lots of other reasons that those life stages, have, have, they're running the gauntlet then. Yeah. Predators are only one part of it and they're kind of the, the end part of it. And we've clearly demonstrated this in the literature with so, several species. Um, what Particularly quail is the one that I think of as, as uh, having really good data on it. If you improve habitat, you improve productivity substantially. If you only trap, you do not. If you improve habitat and then add trapping on it, you can get a bump on the productivity from habitat. That varies based on where you're at in the situation, but uh, that's a pretty good template for you to think about how to really increase productivity of, of turkeys. 